Marianna Miller, introduce yourself. Hi. Hi. It was good stuff, wasn't it? I'm a voice, what, I'm a voice actress. They pay her to do that sort of thing. I talk with my mouth. Careful of you the drink. Of you the drink? Careful of the drink. Okay. <laughs> what show, okay. If you guys wish I could be in any show, what show would you be? You guys wish. Yeah. <laughs> Which show would you wish I would be right now? Which show? Everybody loves Raymond. Huh? Everybody loves Raymond. Everybody, Everybody loves, loves Raymond. 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 <laughs> Raymond. I wish that you there were. There is a voice show. actor in that show, isn't there? Who is it? The guy who's like, Duh. His brother. I don't know. The guy who's got this crazy deep voice. I'll be honest, I've never seen an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond in my oh, life. He was in a 7 Up commercial. A 7 Up. He was in the what? Emperor, Emperor's New Groove? Oh, wait. No, Patrick Warburton? Yeah, no. He said Everybody Loves Raymond? No, 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 no. It's Everybody the guy who's Raymond. somebody's brother and he's got a really deep voice. Like, really deep. Like, you would know exactly what I'm talking about if you were to talk. It's a tall guy. Tall guy? Yeah, it's super not tall, Patrick Warburton. And he's got like a Jew fro. No, it's not Seinfeld. Excuse me, do you know the name of. Pa uh, not Patrick Warburton. <laughs> do you know the name of Everybody Loves Raymond's brother? No. Okay. Damn Raymond's it. brother. Raymond's brother. I thought his full name was Everybody Loves Raymond. Well, you know. Dude, did you hear that our friends just had dinner with Ray Romano the other day? Oh, it was today. Did they love him? No. <laughs> they looked Not at everybody him. Everybody loves him. Everybody looks at Ray. That's what the show should have been called. Everybody has dinner place. with Raymond. <laughs> So welcome to the Naruto Bridge Comedy Fandom Spoof Series Show panel. Hey! I have a feeling it's not going to have anything to do with... No, Naruto. it can have some things. To, it depends on the audience, if okay. they have any interest in it whatsoever. All ten of them. Oh, way now. Way. They're an enthusiastic ten people, aren't You're you? You're an all-star. You're very enthusiastic. Yes. Get your game on. <laughs> she's, she's my favorite member of the audience, because every time we talk about something, she'll do... <laughs> <Shut us up. laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I made, uh, for those of you who are curious as to the origins of the Naruto, oh, sorry. <laughs> feel free to keep playing around. Yami is just like, by the time, by the time, by the time, by the time, I'm not going to let you speak. Does this bug you? By the time. <laughs> uh, Naruto, the British comedy fandom spoofs. Bless you. Series show. <laughs> was created because uh, there was going to be an April Fool's crossover between a bunch of different abridges, me, myself included. Uh, and I put it to the Naruto abridged people, which at the time was Vegeta3986 and, sorry, and Masako X. And they were creating the actual Naruto abridged. And I said to them, wouldn't it be great if uh, April 1st we swapped shows? And I said, this is... And this after uproarious laughter. <laughs> That would be a funny idea, Martin Milani, yes, it would. <laughs> That's exactly how they responded. And they actually said, you know, we'd be happy if, if you did our show, but can we do Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridged as well on the same day? And I was like, yeah, that'll be hilarious! And uh, then we just, the ball kept rolling, and everybody else was going to take part. It was going to be like, Kaizen Echo was going to do Lani Pator's show. Uh, it was basically, it was going to be like a big crisscross of a bridges, basically making fun of each other on one day, which I still think should happen. I think it would be great. Uh, Everyone's but, too self-involved to do that. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I went ahead and I wrote an episode of the Naruto spoof, and uh, they, I believe, wrote an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridged, but unfortunately, they didn't finish theirs by the time... You okay? I thought these were earrings, and now I'm very... <laughs> Here's very a plate of earrings for the guests. I was, I'm very disappointed now, because they looked pretty. <laughs> they still look pretty. Well, no. You could wear them as earrings, technically. No. No? It's done. It's pretend. Look. Then I'd have to wear them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> mouth rings. <laughs> Why hasn't anybody coined that yet? They... Tongue rings, tongue there he is. <laughs> but that's not... Rings. Well, they're lip rings as well. So technically the mouth area is covered. Anyway, so I, I made the Naruto spoof episode, but they didn't finish their Yu-Gi-Oh! abridged episode, which I think is a real shame. I would have loved to see what they would have done with that. They didn't uh, even show you it. I, I, they never showed me anything. All I, it said was, references. Uh, which would have been hilarious. References. Would have been hilarious. You were so unamused, and I was really... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're he's just sitting there like... <laughs> what could I possibly do to make you laugh? 
Uh, get rid of my head. No, no, oh, no, 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 the guy with the head thing. Uh, the gentleman with the, the yeah. is it, is it, Do they call it a do-rag? Is that what they call it? <laughs> a bandana. Bandana. Daisy like, calls it a bandana. Hulk Hogan calls it a bandana. Do you like Hulk Hogan? I choose to believe that you are cosplaying Hulk Hogan. <laughs> like are Japanese you? Hulk Hogan. What? Yeah! Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Naruto. <laughs> That's great because his theme song is I Am a Real American. So. I Am a Real American. <laughs> brother. No, that's the other one. No, he, Hulk Hogan says brother. <gasps> I got it right. A wrestling joke that she made work. Well done. What? You made a wrestling joke work. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yay. I thought you said I made a rested development joke. And I was like, I can make a lot of those. So Naruto, <laughs> how did we connect this to Naruto, though? Uh, they, they gave you the script. They gave me the script. No, they didn't yeah. give me the script. They, they didn't give me the script, and I didn't see anything of what they did. And then I, ultimately, I, I, I released my episode, and I was the only one who did it. And I felt kind of awkward, but also happy, because it made me look special. <laughs> so I got, I got that out. And then after that, I was like, I really enjoyed doing that episode. Why don't I do more? Corn! No! It's corn coon! Oh. Ah. No corn, 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 corn! Well, nobody has a transcript of any of the Guys, episodes of Naruto Spoof. That's because it's terrible. It's the... <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Believe it! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was basically the, the, the inception, the conception of Naruto Spoof, is it was originally intended to be a big group thing, but nobody else wanted to take part, or they tried taking part, and it just failed. Uh, it, it, it basically, it was a it was a very failed attempt at a big crossover between all the different bridges, and I was the only one who did it, and I kept going, and, and nobody's been able to stop me, despite you know that probably being a good idea. Nope. Stop. No. I tried. He, she tried. <laughs> he, she Hello. tried. Did you just say that? I did. You I'm just sorry. said that to your. Excuse me. I'm sorry. She's my wife. Are you ready, boy? What's up? Yeah. It's no, that's not a joke. We got. I'm married. Well, she's really married. We're both today. married. I know you. It, it's We're both clear. married to this not the same person, but yeah. What was it that made you doubt it? I'm curious. <laughs> the fact that you never. Do you just not take me seriously at all about anything that comes out of my mouth? Yeah. Okay. No, we have matching wedding rings. See, look at that. Do they? Is this, yeah, mine's black and yours oh, is black. That's right. There you go. That's Only right. mine has Black Hills gold in it. Sucker. No. Let's tell a story of how we, we, we hooked up, because this guy doesn't hooked believe up? us. And if we, tr if, we, if we convince this guy that we're actually in a relationship, we can convince the U.S. government. <laughs> yeah? We do need to do that. We're we not do joking need to do that. about that. And so, I work for the government. What? And I work for the government. You what? work for the government. What? Hell, then even more reason. Oh, damn it. Now I don't want to tell. So, Mariana is a voice actress. She's actually a professional voice actress. We're not joking about that either. We're not joking about that, <laughs> even though it is Although hilarious. I'm not in Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she's in Full Metal Alchemist. She was in a Dragon Age Machinima, actually officially made by Bioware. I was in Sword Art Online. She's in Sword Art Online. She's in, uh, what's it, uh, Rick Fate Zero? Fate Zero. Fate well, Zero. So, uh, I haven't even opened my beer yet. What is the... Squid Girl! Squid Girl, people like that one. Are we, are we ringing any bells? Yeah! <laughs> hey. Alucard watches anime. And I'm not a voice actress. What have you been in, Martin? I have been in K on the Movie. Surprisingly not as one of the little girls in the band. Damn it. I know. When you are a voice actor, you still are a voice actress. I, I am, <laughs> I'm a, an abridger slash attempted professional voice actor. You've gotten paid more than I have. I attempted to do it. But anyway, we met because she is in a bunch of cartoons on the internet, and I'm in a bunch of cartoons on the internet, and uh, we cross paths occasionally. There was a scene where a character's made out. It was an F Zero parody. Do you guys know F Zero on the Super yeah. Nintendo? Uh, woo! And uh, we made out. Woo! And, <laughs> and we, uh, we, I really liked her voice. I thought she had a very sexy voice. And I told the guy who animated it uh, over dinner one time, I, she has a really sexy voice. I didn't, I didn't know. It's not good? I put soda. Too much rum in there? No, too much whiskey. I have you taking off? I'll train you at 9.45. I, I wish that we could have showed it. I'm so sorry. No, man. I love you. Oh. Well, 
You live in Austin. It's okay. No, I understand. I <laughs> <laughs> and Anders. Anders was I was more into Zebra than Alistair, but I'm I'm not, you know. Uh, Anders, like in Dragon Age 2, Anders? She, she oh. He blows, up the, church. He's he blows like, up the church, that's pretty hot. He's such a whiner, I hate him. Oh my god. He's like, oh, don't oh, piss oh, off oh, the homestuck. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what they can so do. <laughs> Your whole fandom will come raining horse. down. Oh shit. I keep t- it's, it's like serious. that scene in True Blood when Lafayette takes out his earrings before he kicks someone's head. He's like, oh, Lafayette, no! Same thing, um, Put your back in. Have a good night. Good night. Holy fucking time. That bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, then so I, I was playing Dragon Age and I was like, Teehee Dragon Age, Alistair, I want to do you. And then somebody called me and he was like, here's a British guy. And I was like, I like British guys. <laughs> and then I hung up the phone. That was the noise she made. It was really okay. <laughs> but then we started. Are you sure you're not in Everybody Loves Raven? <laughs> That's what he says. Ah, like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then we you talked over to me over line journal, and then eventually started talking over Skype. And I told you, does I, anyone care about this? Does anybody care about? Yeah, this guy. Because we're trying to. Everybody, everybody in the room cares about this. This is important information. I like to know how people met. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we started talking on the internet, and then he was like, I like you, and I was like, I like you. I didn't you. say I like you. I you know what? You. I, thank you. I said I dig you. If you ever want to marry a beautiful voice actress like this, not this one specifically, because that's, <laughs> no. But tell them that you dig them, and apparently that works. <laughs> Did it work? No. No? <laughs> just married you for your abridging fame. Right. Now I'm so famous, look at me. I'm he didn't even believe that we were married. Queen of a bridging. <laughs> and then uh, we we just we started hanging out at conventions because obviously I lived in England and she lived in LA and that's a, kind of a long distance. Has anyone ever been in a long distance relationship? Doesn't it suck? Balls? It sucks, right? It's the most painful thing. You know, it's the most incredible thing where you sit. Oh. That's Wait, cool. you guys were in a long distance relationship and are you still, you're not? Are you still in a long distance relationship? Or you, that's fantastic. Where, that's where really were you cool. guys living when you were in a relationship? I was living in Tennessee. When you were? Tennessee? And where were you? I'm in Okay. In that's pretty, where are, that's pretty we're far. We're in California? Yes. I had to remember. I just went to Tennessee like last month. For a young Yeah, young. the beginning of December. Mm-hmm. But no, uh, honestly, I'm very, I, and I'm happy for you guys that you guys are together now. And I'm very happy to be with you, Mariana, because not having you in my life is, it, it was the worst thing that has ever happened to me, so. Gross. You are the best thing that's ever happened to me, so that one person is impressed. <laughs> she isn't. Oh, that's- They're right. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Olaf today, I'm just laughing. You feel like Olaf? What do you mean? You have no bones? Yeah. <laughs> the, Obviously, with the long distance thing happening, we either choose we either choose a life where we can't be together because it's just not feasible because we can't uh, because you know we can't just keep doing the long distance thing the rest of our lives. You right? I was just checking oh. the screen. We can't do the long distance thing for the rest of our lives because that just would be too much stress and too much money and everything. Or we could, you know, be with each other and not miss out on the greatest thing that ever happened to us and actually make the move. And so we quickly decided that the best thing for me, for us, would be, would be for me to come over to America, because first of all, you, you'd already had like a, a lot of you know jobs based out here, and because uh, I'm a voice actress, right. and, I, and I kind of have similar interests. So I flew out, uh, and well, actually no, we 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 applied. He took me to Italy to propose, right. and then we got robbed. We got robbed in Italy, and it was very depressing. And yeah. then I, and then he proposed anyway, and I was like, okay. <laughs> because it was a very depressing situation, and I, I wanted it to be a very romantic situation, but it turned into something really awkward. Out I'm gonna of make him make it up to me eventually. But we're gonna be in like Disney World, in Italy in Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> in Epcot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drinking, like, Italian margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there such a thing? I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I proposed to you in Italy and you said yes, and then we went through the whole... Very begrudgingly. Very begrudgingly. And we went through the whole process of applying for the fiancé visa, which was a seven-month, eight-month thing. Yeah, seven-month. And uh, it was very annoying because you had a lot of paperwork to do, and then I had to do a big medical thing and an interview, 
Yeah, I had like I spent like most of the work. I spent like three months working on packets, and he had to get his junk touched by a muppet. That's about <laughs> that was it. My the doctor who who checked me out to make sure I was I was in perfect health. Sounded kind of like this the whole time as she was doing it. It was very unnerving. And you were like, my blindness operation. My blindness sister. operation, yeah. But um, does anyone have any on-topic questions, by the way? Because I feel like we're which just, topic are we referring? I feel like I feel like we're just describing a dream we had, and <laughs> people are just tuning us out of it. Chris, <laughs> uh, if you were to, if you were allowed to do another version, anything in the world, anything you want, what would you really want? To do what? An unabridged. Gonkutsuo! Okay, uh, we, we were able to do a parody of anything. I would love to do Gonkutsuo with Mariana. Either Gonkutsuo or myself, my little, my, my little pet project I really want to do is Tenchi Muyo Abridged. Like, because Tenchi Muyo was the show I, that kind of got me into anime. And uh, it, it's a classic, and the only thing really holding me back is the casting, because there are so many women in that show I can't possibly pull that off on my own. <laughs> but uh, I, I would love to do it, and I, I, I'd love to really make it special. Like, I, I wouldn't want to like, it up or anything like that. I'd really want to make sure it was something I was proud of. Because I, I tried Evangelion, and while I, ultimately I am proud of what I do with Evangelion, I don't think it's, this, it's the show. I wouldn't want to make a whole series out of that. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, and it was funny, but it, it's not like an actual, like, I, I can't see that lasting more than two or three episodes if I were to turn that into a thing. But Tension Mio, I would want to actually be able to look back on it in like five, ten years and be like, wow, I'm really glad that I did that. You know, I, 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 I'd want to pay real homage to those characters and, and the story and, and everything. Because I, I love everything about that show. It's really, it's, it's classic anime, you know? You have anything else to add? About Gonkutsu or nothing? Every episode would just say, we are gay, and that's it. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I was expecting great. this to be a much rowdier panel, I'll give you. Yeah, everyone's like, well, I didn't mean you if guys, you just... could do an abridged series, <laughs> which one would hey, you Hey, come on, he asked a really good question before, and now you make well, it Well, yes, if you were in a long-distance relationship, how would that go? I don't know what she's getting this Excuse voice from. Excuse me, sir. Which voice is your favorite to do? <laughs> sir, what is you? Why is it like Flabos? <laughs> what? Flabos? I thought he called me Flabos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no. Fat glass. That's why there's no cake. She ate it. Oh, I did just eat cake though. <laughs> You're not Flabos. Oh. What? What? Oh my that, God, that, that was just like. Me. Uh, what's his name? Please, sir, can I have some more? Oliver. Oliver Twist, that's right. Please, that's what it sounded uh, like. Please, would you sir, like can some I more zucchini bisque? bisque? Ah! I just made that. That was great. <laughs> the bisque or the voice? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think either of them were really good. Wait a minute. How would you say uh, what you do relates to or differs from the stuff that, like, Mystery Science Theater 3000 or other people? Like live, yeah. Do you think there's like a specific animating thing that exists on its own, or would you consider it a bigger part of the vast sort of type of Well, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is 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 literally taking the film, putting it on a screen, and then talking over it. Uh, it, it. It requires you to you know have experience with the actual uh, the actual media itself that's that's being made fun of because you're actually watching it while it's happening. And it also requires you to just, you know, have a sense of humor at the same time. We actually did a riff. We did do a, a riff of the Death Note movie, the live action one, which I, I thought came out pretty good. It did come out pretty good, but oh god, it was hard. It was a long process. It was way longer and way harder and way than more abridging. involved than abridging. Yeah, because first of all, you have to... Uh, you, you have write... to watch, like, like we basically did it in ten minute segments with... Uh, and what would happen was we had the two of us and then Kyle A. Bear is on it, and then this guy named Lucas Shudeman who does voiceover voice in uh, Chicago and stuff. But so the four of us would each individually watch 10 minutes of this movie at a time, and then we would have to submit our scripts for that 10 minute section of time within a certain period. And then uh, and it would continue until we were done with the movie, and then 
uh, we would go through the script, pick the best jokes, and then we had to, uh, 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 by the time we were finished, we had to sit down and record the movie like twice. So we had to, by the time all was said and done, we watched this movie like 10 to 20 oh times. Oh my god, I was sick of that The bad. Death Note movie, we had to watch it so many so times. So many times. That's the worst thing I've ever had to experience. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's, 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 personally I feel it's very different because abridging, you're literally changing inherently. I mean, not necessarily drastically differently, although in some cases, some of the stuff I've done has, has completely reversed what's in the show. Uh, you are usurping the original media and replacing it with your own humor, your own jokes. Uh, you are essentially riffing on the storyline, but you're more, you're not riffing specifically on dialogue or on like, you know, beats in the script or anything like that. You are rewriting it and remaking it, essentially. Uh, I, I liken it more to Space Ghost Coast to Coast because I, and I love both. I love Mystery Science there and I love Space Ghost. But Space Ghost was a show that took these classic characters and said, what if, you know, it, it said, what if they were in this whole other situation and Space Ghost was just a giant egotistical dick and Zorak and Maltar were his lackeys and they just wanted to screw with him, you know. So, in my opinion, it's, it's more like... Uh, an exaggeration, a relocation of, of what's already there. Whereas Mystery Science Theater is is almost just like uh, like 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 you say, it's riffing on on the on the movie. And I feel like uh, so much harder. It's I mean I think both things have the the you know something that's easy and something that's difficult about them. I feel like uh, with abridging, it's more of an open book. Like you can around with anything that you want. You can change this character to sound like this, do whatever the hell you want. With a, a riff, you're stuck with what's there. Because people, I mean, the thing with riffing is like, I mean, the thing with the bridging is, people kind of, uh, like, they, they see the amount of work that goes into it. Even if they don't want to admit it, they see that you basically have to take the clips, you have to arrange the clips in a certain way, you have to write a script, you have to create all the voices, you have to record the voices. And if you do it really well, people won't f***ing notice, and that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the key, is that great editing is invisible. But people, people will still recognize that there's an amount of work that, puts into, that you have to put into it. As opposed to riffing, people just think that you just sit there yeah. and talk over well, Some people can do that. They can't, uh, no. They can't do that for like two Not and like a half. Not like Yeah, no. and you can't be consistently funny unless you have a script. And in order to have a script that's consistently funny, you have to watch that movie a thousand times. Yeah. But people don't realize the amount of work that you have to put into riffing because it's so effortless looking. That's the true, like, in my opinion, out of the two, I'd say riff, it's not that one is more difficult than the other, but I'd say people have more of an appreciation for one than the other, yeah. on the surface anyway. I agree with you. And maybe I'm just saying that because I hated <laughs> <laughs> doing that, it was awful. Yeah. I mean, I, I ultimately enjoyed it. I, I, I've always it was, wanted to do it that. It's but... challenging, but I don't want to watch that movie ever. Very different experiences, but yeah. uh, I, I can see the similarities, certainly, but I, I, I think they're very different animals. Ultimately. I think my challenge is I'm not funny. That's my challenge. No, I think you have, you have your own sense of humor, and I think... And it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to insult the movie a lot. I want thing. to insult everybody. That's <laughs> my thing. Gentleman here has a question. Uh, What's that? Uh, your life. Oh my god. I find it's a chef who's still on a tubi. Oh! Oh! Yeah, that guy. What, what's his name? Uh, Brad Garrett. Yeah! So a book from Tango. Yeah. Flames. And. He's done a ton of voiceover. Huh! He's like super deep voice. I don't know this guy. Night at the Museum. <laughs> wait, is, wait, who was he in Night at the Museum? He was the dum dum. He was that f thing. I dum dum. You give me gum gum. Yeah. You give me gum gum. Why is that funny? I don't get it. It's not funny, but that guy's voice is like, boom. I know that guy. Okay. Done. That guy has work for life. I wish I had work for life. Well, now we. Know. I have to work for my work. And knowing is at least forty percent of the battle. No. I want to steal your badge. I gotta go to the bathroom. Where you going? Oh, my badge. Okay. I told him to look out for a large woman with a tattoo that wouldn't stop talking about how annoying I was. What? <laughs> the guy at the door. What? I told him to look out for you. Oh, uh, well, he can't see my tattoo. 
You should have shown it to him. Okay, well, I'll take it off. <laughs> Show everybody your tattoo. Bathroom. How can I make this thing you guys while she's gone? Is there anything I can do? Oh, yes. Um, if all the characters in Yu-Gi-Oh got in, like, a physical fight, oh. who would win? Who would win? Now, somebody <laughs> asked, because I did a convention where I learned that Yu-Gi had diabetes. What? <laughs> yeah, okay, so this was news to me as well. I did a convention where I, I said, are there any questions about anything? And people lined up in the middle of the island and were, like, very curious about certain things. The, the first person who came up was this, this young girl, she was you know, this short little thing, very innocent looking, and she looks up and goes, um, sir? And I'm like, sir, okay, <laughs> yes? And she's like, um, I know that you, you put a lot of research into what you do, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, all right. And uh, she goes, I was wondering uh, if you were going to make certain uh, obscure references to, to the actual manga, uh, like, like, and I'm thinking that she's going to make jokes about, I don't know, like, Tristan's nephew, or so, something that sticks out of the manga that is ridiculous. Like, Tristan has a nephew that is a pervert, that's like, he, he looks like a giant, he looks like a, ti a tiny little man, basically. And he's like a baby, and he keeps squeezing Taya's breasts, and it's really awkward. But, I was expecting her to come up with something that I knew, but it turned out that she said, like what she said to me was like, for example, I was wondering if you're going to make any jokes about the fact that Yugi has diabetes. And I was like, he does? You know, this, was, this was brand new information. And it turns out there is a translation of the manga where Yugi collapses after a really intense moment in the series and Joey walks up to him and says, You, what's wrong? Have you not taken your insulin? <laughs> and everybody's translated that as meaning that Yugi has diabetes. And later on that day, I mentioned it on a, an 18 plus panel, and somebody said, If you had Yugi in a cage match <laughs> with a bunch of other people who had diabetes <laughs> and they were fighting over like an insulin, like. <laughs> injection thing, who would win? Yugi or like a bunch of children with diabetes? <laughs> and I'm like, Yugi would shank the out of those guys before he let them get his insulin. So I think if you took Yugi's insulin away, he would kick some serious ass in that fight. I think he would have the edge. Plus he has an Egyptian pharaoh who can mind crush people in there. I know that Bakora is evil and all, but he, he takes like five seasons to do anything. So, you know, I, I, think, he, I think Yugi definitely has the edge. He could, he could tear a guy's face off if he wanted to. I, I, I wouldn't put it past him. Does that answer your question? Sweet, sweet. Anybody else have any questions about literally anything? Yes? Will Dungeon Dice Monsters ever come back in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise? Would it be great if Arc, the new series, Arc 5, came out and it was just Dungeon Dice Monsters the whole time? <laughs> and it was like, that's the big thing now, it's Dungeon Dice Monsters and Yu-Gi's just all like, what the f is this? This is this is dual monsters, guys, and they're all like, "No, man, Dungeon Dice Monsters, it's the new thing." <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's the thing. I would I would watch that show. I don't know. I mean, they they tried making a board game based on it, right? Uh, there was a video game and a board game. Probably just to make more money. Uh, one of the categories is <laughs> songs. I see. I can't recognize that at all. Uh, I see, I see. I should recognize 80 songs. I fucking love 80 songs. Uh, but uh, what were we asking? Oh, Dungeon Dice Monsters. I know they made a video game, they made a board game, but I don't fucking understand Dungeon Dice Monsters for the life of me. I, I wish I did. Uh, I know that you make the little square blocks. It's like, what do you call it, Fire Emblem, only yes. it's, it's boring and you can't marry people. So, I, I don't like it. So, I guess ultimately, no, I hope Dungeon Dice Monsters rots in a fire. I, I would like that to happen. I, I hope Duke Devlin comes back. I hope any of those characters come back, but Dungeon Dice Monsters I can live without. Yes, in the green. Uh, I overheard a couple of people talking today about Yu-Gi-Oh! They said that the, sh the Shadow Realm was made up by four games. Correct. Uh, I was just, I don't know. I it blew your mind. It was like learning that Santa Claus wasn't real. It was really weird. Processing it, but <laughs> I looked at it and I found lots of the rams in the video of Rachel, but yes, sir. is it uh, ever going to be discussed as, as being you know, fruit balls or 
I mean, I, I, <laughs> I've, I've made reference to the fact that it's a, a made-up thing uh, in the Bonds Beyond Time movie I did. There was a, if you've not watched my show, they, uh, they did a big crossover with Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX, and Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds called uh, Bonds Beyond Time, where the protagonists of each series basically go back in time and meet up with each other to defeat the ultimate evil, which is a guy in a mask on a motorcycle. And, uh, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, and they, uh, in my version of the, the show, uh, well, in the movie, Grandpa, Yuki's grandpa dies. Like, he gets crushed by a building and dies uh, as a result of the evil guy on the motorcycle. And uh, I, I did this joke in my version where Yuki's like, oh, my grandpa was sent to the Shadow Realm. And the other guys are like, no. <laughs> No, he's dead. And Yugi's like, Shadow Realm, right? And they're like, no, no, death, hell, deceased. And he's like, you gotta be kidding me. Well, that's, that's, that was the gist of the joke. But uh, yeah, they made up the Shadow Realm because obviously for a long time in like the late 90s or the mid to late 90s, uh, early 2000s, death was just not a thing that you acknowledged. Recently, they've sort of uh, they've lightened up on that a little bit. But uh, they specifically had to edit out any reference of death. Whenever there was like a, a gun or a blade involved, they had to either take it out completely or they would replace it with like a, a strange magical thing that, you know, couldn't be explained. And honestly, in a way, the Shadow Realm is actually the most creative and, and neat thing that they ever did because rather than just ignore it completely, they were like, instead of dying, let's pretend that their soul was cast into some like pit of eternal damnation. I'm like, that's still pretty up. You know, it may not be saying dead, but who wants that to happen? You know, it's still pretty cool. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I, I'm okay with the Shadow Realm. I'm, I have no problem with that. Um, we have like five minutes left of this. Yeah. Shall we just turn it over to the audience for questions again? Sure. Anybody have any questions? You can literally ask about anything. You can be as invasive as you like. Seriously. You can be rude. Yes. What's, what's the happiest moment of your life? What's the happiest moment of my life? Are you kidding me? This bitch. Yeah. Getting married to my lovely wife. Seriously, yeah. yeah. It really it's a was. cop out. Cop out. You convinced. Oh, hey, we convinced him. Now we can actually Yay. be together. We can live legally. Let's go do it. Well, you are. So romantic. And by it, I mean the Cards Against Humanity panel. At That's not happening just yet. At 11 p.m. Oh, at 11 if you stop cutting me off like a an asshole. I love you too. Are <laughs> you guys enjoying this witty banter? Them? <laughs> Feel free to join us at the Cards Against Humanity Gentlemen at 11 with the rest of the guests and we'll make poop jokes there too, I'm sure. But we still have more time, so we need to keep talking. Feel, you should ask somebody to ask a question. I should harass somebody into asking yeah, a question? Yeah, see who a uh, corn guy has another question. What? Have you ever met anyone a total jerk? Have we ever met anybody? No. Who... We there is somebody who is famous. no names, no names that we can. No mention. names, yeah. Obviously, we can't drop any names. Can we just like use a specific Hulk Hogan? Like we can just yeah. say Hulk Hogan instead of the person's name. Hulk Hogan is yes. a huge asshole, okay. and he keeps like ragging on Martin all the. Oh yeah, Hulk Hogan hates me. He's never met Martin, and Hulk never Hogan is just like this douchebag. I hope Hogan, this douchebag gets sued. Hulk Hogan goes around specifically, and when people ask me, people ask him things in reference to me, he will just be like, F "That guy, you know, that guy's an idiot. He's not funny." And and Hulk Hogan hates me for some apparent reason, and I don't know what I did, as, you know, aside from make a, a, a show that said, "Haha, Yu-Gi-Oh is silly," you know. Yeah. There's Hulk Hogan of, hates that, I guess. There's a couple of Hulk Hogan's. There's a couple of Hulk Hogan's, but he is the biggest Hulk Hogan. I met James Marsden once, and he was nice, and I was really drunk. <laughs> and he was like, I'm here to sing karaoke, and I was like, I'm the KJ. What? You're famous. <laughs> and he was this small. Yeah, he was super short, and he sang NSYNC. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He's saying gone. Well, my favorite NSYNC. encounters with, because I'd rather talk about good experiences, experiences with celebrities. I forget the name of the guy. Who plays Lucifer in Supernatural? 
Oh, yeah. Mark Pellegrino, thank you very much. Met him at a convention in uh, Australia slash New Zealand. Well, it was really, like, there were a bunch of, like, celebrities at this con. Like, we met Carl Urban there, and we met, like, there were a ton of voice actors there, and then there were a ton of screen actors, obviously, Carl Urban, and then there were some Vampire Diaries and Game of Thrones guy, and then there was Mark, Mark Pellegrino. Who I was nerding out of because I love that guy's work. But the whole con, he was super quiet, kind of stayed off to himself, read a book. Read a book, yeah. He, he all the voice actors, like, you could tell who the voice actors were because they were all really boy boisterous and talk to each other. Not to like talk screen actors, but no, they're they, a different they, just, they, they have their own world like, and they kind of have to have that. Yeah, successful screen actors are a little closed off because they're just, you know, always on. And people are always watching what they do. Yeah. Voice actors have the anonymity, they don't, they don't have to work because nobody knows what they look like. Yeah. A screen actor has to always be on their guard. Although so. the guy, there was the guy who was the sword fighting instructor from Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones. There, was there, he was like, you know, what do we say to death? Not today, that guy. He was so cute, he was so tiny, he would like bounce around the voice actors and be like, be my friend! He was so cute. But like Mark Pellegrino was kind of off to himself. Very quiet, very And then we went out to a bar in New Zealand where you paid $20 per drink. It was crazy. And like, because everything's expensive there. But we. I, this so, was during Halloween as well. Yeah, so after our $20 Long Island iced tea, um, we were saying goodbye to everybody and we were like, bye, we're gonna go watch a horror movie. And Mark Pellegrino was like, which one? Like he flipped a table and ran across the room. Not really, but he was really excited. Like he, he wasn't even facing our direction. And as soon as we said, we're watching a horror movie, he spun around and was like, tell me, <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, so he, like we had spent the next hour talking to Mark Pellegrino Probably about like- more than an hour at that point. Yeah, yeah, we were like talking about like Left 4 Dead. Video games, and video, movies. Yeah, and like all these horror movies. And he was like, did you see Insidious? Yeah, that was a good one. Did you see this one? Yeah, that was a good one. We had just, like really in-depth conversations about films and games and it was just, like, I haven't been able to talk to anybody else at the convention because I'm just kind of closed off myself. We talked to Johnny Bosch. We talked to Johnny on Bosch, absolutely. We talked to Christy Reed, and we talked to Bruce Boxleitner about horse butts. Mm -hmm. That was exciting. But that, that whole hour with Mark Pellegrino was like the coolest thing because he, he had absolutely no obligation to talk to either of us, and he didn't even know us or what we'd done, and he just was really, really interested in, in everything we were saying. And, and then on the way back, we were flying from Sydney to LA. And if you've seen Lost, he played Jacob in Lost, who was the guy who essentially caused them to crash on the island. And so Martin's like, we're gonna, we're so Yeah, because he sat on the, like, the plane opposite <laughs> us, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be candidates. But he was so cool. I liked him. And Carl Urban was so awkward because I went up to, like, the con chair, I was talking to the con chair and I was like, Carl Urban's here and I have a crush on him because he's really handsome. And then the con chair was like, hi, Carl Urban, how's it going? And I was like, oh, girl, Carl Urban. And Carl Urban was like, oh, because he's, uh, he's, he's like from Australia or New Zealand or something, I don't know. And I was like, I like your tattoo wedding ring. And he was like, yeah. And then I was like, I liked your frowny face in Judge Dredd. And he was like, yeah. And that was like our conversation was, was him saying. grunting at me. <laughs> Which was his dialogue in Judge Dredd as well. Yeah, so I don't think he was completely turned off from the publicity tour. I think that's about all we really have time for. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. But if you guys are at all curious, I do recommend coming to the All Guests Cards Against Humanity Guests This Is a Game because I, I believe it will be a lot of fun and I think you guys will get a big kick out, kick out of it. And if you're not able to come to the convention tomorrow, I, I hope you had a great day. And if I'll see you tomorrow, I hope I'll be in the dealer's room. I really hope we play all the clean cards though, just to follow <laughs> with this panel right. trend of like, what the, do you think of a bridge? It's an 18 plus panel. What do you think you of a bridge? voice actors <laughs> But uh, yeah, yes, I, I do hope you've had a great time, and if, if you have any questions at all, I'm way too drunk to answer them, so. <laughs> but feel free to come to the, the panel later, and, and maybe say hey if you come to the deals room tomorrow. So, yeah. yes. Have a great time, guys. Take care, thanks for going. Did we make you laugh a little bit, Mr. Hulk Hogan? A little bit? Oh, he's hiding, he's hiding.